Happy guys. New Year. Happy New Year. It is another year of the Flame Central podcast. Yes. Don't worry. It is still powered by Alcova Mortgage. There's so with- much power. <laughs> so 2024 much power. for Alcova Mortgage is going to be the battery is full. It's loaded with power. <laughs> a lot of power. You oh, know, I can feel it. I can um, feel it in the air. My mental health this time of year, it really, it's a struggle because all the Christmas decorations come down. Everything looks so lame and boring. And she just and drags bare. us down with her. That's and, pretty much the way it And goes. you know what? Yeah. I come in and our, our, you know, our guy Doug working behind the scenes, he's coming in my office just like looking around i'm like what are you doing doug yeah. i need some things to fill the bookcase and i'm just like a tear oh, what is this a right tear here? fell from my face yeah, because bookcase. look doug just went i'm gonna I find some that. i'm gonna I find some bookcase. trees to put behind you guys that yeah. are taller yeah. Yeah. you know like just to have a little Let's bit not more get spice. into what those books are i'm seeing there's a children's <laughs> book there's like i don't even know what's back there we do not endorse personally any of the books that are behind us we have no idea what doug chose so i just want to put that out there we do have some good bobbleheads before there, somebody's though. like oh you what's know what that? Okay, I have no idea. I have a great idea about the bobblehead thing. Oh, we I don't know if um, Alcova Mortgage could sponsor this or uh, maybe we have some room in the Flame Central budget somewhere. (laughs) What if we what if we did a bobblehead for each of us and did a segment where like you say whatever you want and then the other two have to either agree and you do the bobblehead yes or the bobblehead no. The people have been clamoring for a Yacht Talk bobblehead. That's pretty good. I mean, they're clamoring for it. That's pretty good. Can you imagine a Yacht Talk bobblehead? But unfortunately, we burned through our entire budget in Phoenix. Yeah, that's fair. We got to look to next year on that one. Yeah, Guys, speaking of Phoenix and the Fiesta Bowl, what was your favorite takeaway from maybe not football-wise, but just the entire experience? My biggest takeaway is I didn't know all this time you could actually avoid winter. Like, <laughs> how did I not know this? Right? How, That's very why true. does everyone not live there, like, in the oh. wintertime? It was beautiful. It was No, so I awesome. think the biggest thing I've, I've told people is it was so cool. My favorite, my two favorite moments were the pep rally and the Sunday morning church service. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. And the pep rally was so cool to look around and be like, like, oh, we've done a story on him. We've done a story on him. We've done a story on her. Like so many people that came back that are connected to Liberty yeah. Athletics and Liberty Football that we hadn't seen in years. Right. Uh, and guys, even from other sports I saw, baseball players, you know, stuff like that, where like it was so cool to connect with all of them and see how they are, you know, getting so much joy from this and feel like they're a part of it. And they are. Like I was talking to some old football players and they're like, this wasn't that long ago. They're like, we were dressing in a trailer at Presbyterian getting ready for a game. <laughs> he goes, and now look, we're in the Fiesta Bowl. Like th- those crazy. guys got to feel a part of that because they helped lay the groundwork for this. Mm-hmm. That was the coolest part to me, just getting to reconnect with a lot of those people and see how much fun this ride has been. Because, you know, Joe, like sometimes guys that aren't that far removed from playing can feel a little bitter, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, they have all the great facilities. Right. We didn't have that. Oh, they get all this. We didn't get that. But there was, I didn't none say, there was that. none of that. Mm-hmm. It was just, they were so thrilled to help be a part of this whole event. Yeah. And and that was what was really cool to me. And your favorite part was Anne on the podcast. Oh, Anne was great. Anne was great. She was great. Yeah. Anne was great. The Pep Rally podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Bring yeah. Anne on the podcast yeah. when I and asked her, where were you in 1971? Yeah. And she gave the explanation of being on the mountain. Yeah. And Jerry Falwell yes. and his big hand. She was ready. And, and, yeah. then, and then your follow-up, yeah. well, your follow-up yeah. was, yeah. Anne, where do you get your hair done? Yeah. Yeah. It yes. happens to be the same time. Yes, where were you? Oh, God. Yeah, that was beautiful. I mean, yes, have an Shout out, Bliss. Maybe it'll be the Flame Central podcast powered by Al. Alcova Mortgage in Fueled by Fueled yeah. by yeah. The yeah. Um yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention is our creative video. I don't know if you had a chance to see the the game trailer leading up to the Fiesta Bowl. The duck but yeah. Yes. That was great. So our creative team went out to West Monroe, Louisiana yeah. to catch up with um, Willie Robertson. R- Willie Robertson. He did the the narration for the game trailer, and it is epic. If you haven't gone to see, if you haven't seen it, go back and, and check that out. But did you see Oregon? Just put out I saw that. their response yeah. troll video, yeah. which I think is pretty pretty yeah. cool, and w- we have a sense of humor right. at Liberty. So you know, when you're playing with the big boys, yeah, you know there's going to be some yeah, of this. You right. So you know what? Any attention is I good attention it. when it comes love to that kind of stuff. Yeah. I love it. So that was a great um, a great uh, David Hurley produced that. Yeah. So so thanks for that great work. 
All right, let's get to some game talk. Yeah. By the way, we're going to talk a little hoops. We are. CUSA played, uh, has oh, started. Oh, I know. Heartbreak, don't, heartbreak hotel. Don't, heartbreak. don't heartbreak start. Hotel. It, there can only be one of us with emotional issues around here. Um, yeah, we'll leave that men's and women's <laughs> basketball we'll started CUSA yeah, yeah. Yeah. hoops. Um, we have Chad Scott on the show, and if you want to know some like in depth, conversation and knowledge about how the training looks for uh, this 2024 team. started already for him. It started. Oh it's underway. Gosh. It yeah. is yeah. some good stuff. And there's some chocolate protein recipes in that conversation. You want to get all healthy in 2024? Yeah. Chad Scott's got That's a right. recipe. Um, for him. All right. So what's your major takeaway from the actual game? Because we haven't had a podcast since the festival. Yeah. So we have not. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of time in the second half on the sideline. Do you want line. to start one on, we were, on this show? So the three of us, or at least Emily for part of the time, but oh, the two of us were on the sideline for, for the game. And Wait, you know what, Matt? What? Once I went up, I went up I after the first quarter. And yeah. some people mentioned that. Yeah. Some people did, did bring up that fact that, you know, we were leading 6-3, and then Emily said, oh, I'm going to go up to the fancy yeah, to, seats or whatever. And then I, we saw oh how it gosh. went. So You guys, I was an idiot and wore heels, so yeah, I'm not going to kiss. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm just trying to be a girl. That was a okay, go. Anyway, uh, I feel like the, the game would have, obviously, 45-6. Giving up the 45 wasn't a surprise to me, necessarily. That I would have believed if you told me pregame. Would have had a hard time believing we'd score only six. I thought we would score more. Mm -hmm. We had the opportunity to score more. Some tough breaks, the turnover late in the first half that was or wasn't an interception. I don't think it was. But like those things hurt. The game would have felt a lot different, I feel like, if the order of the scoring were different. Even if it was 45-6, but it was a 21-0, you get a touchdown, they add on. I feel like the mood, the vibe would have felt a little different because of what Liberty did on that very first drive. It felt yeah. like it hurt a lot worse mm -hmm. because you move the ball, bang, 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 bang. You get the the bad good run with the 15 yards on that late hit. Yet beautiful throw to Hanshaw. You're feeling like, why not? You're 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 feeling like this is it. We can do this. And then to not be able to the rest of the game, it, it stung a little bit more than if I feel like the scoring would have been ordered a little bit differently. I don't want to talk about it. But there were definitely opportunities there on the offensive side. There were definitely opportunities to be had just not able to take advantage of it. And, you know, you have a, a drop on a third down that you would have converted in the first half. Uh, you had the, the turnover we mentioned. Like, those just a couple of mistakes. You just, you just can't make those when you're already at a talent deficiency yeah. against a team. The caliber of Oregon. Oh, by the way, we went into it saying Oregon six points away from the playoff. The team that they lost to, those six points, they're playing Is for a national, national championship team? tonight. Yeah. Like, 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 Oregon, if you want to, like, lay it out, they yeah. might be the fifth best team in the nation. They may not even be fifth. They yeah. may be higher than that. So they are that legit, and 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 Bo Nix is that legit as well. I mean, yeah. what what was it at the half? Ninety six. We had ninety six yards on the ground. I think Oregon's right. defense was giving that up like a game. A game. You know. Yeah. So that that was a we positive in my there. eyes. Joe? I mean, I think I think when I go back and I start thinking about looking at it, I always think to myself, okay, going into the game, you think. What are we capable of? Mm -hmm. What are we capable of and what are we not capable of, right? And so, and then then, then you try to find and where, where you're going to just improve to not just be happy to be there, but we get to the point where you're capable of winning the ball game. So my opinion is this. We were very capable offensively of scoring points, yeah. right? We just didn't execute the way that that we should have been executing. Just didn't play yeah. well offensively at opportunities to be there. Where we weren't capable, to be quite frank with you, was we weren't capable of stopping them. Yeah. Right? They, like, there is room once they got that rolling. once you get to that level and you start looking at the best teams in the country, right? The Washington, the Michigan, the Alabamas, the teams that are playing, is that defensively, they're capable of getting the stop. They may not stop every time, but they're capable of getting stops and they need to get stops in order. But you look at Washington. That Washington team has improved drastically defensively from where they were at the start of the season to where they are now. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say is this. you got to look at our defense. Obviously, you're looking to always improve on offense, but you got to look at the defense and you got to say, okay, where do we have to get to defensively from a strength, depth, and speed standpoint in order to be capable of closing that gap where you can get where you can get consistently get stops and have an opportunity to win the game. And so I think that's where Coach Chadwell is going to look at this thing and go, we got to get 
more speed defensively. Mm-hmm. We got to get more depth at yeah. the defensive line position, the linebacker position. We got to get more speed and length in the secondary in order to put ourselves in a position to be capable of winning. Because once again, remember, next year it's a 12 well, versus five team. seed, and mm-hmm. you're going to get the five seed who is fully loaded. They're not, not out. There's going to be no NFL right. opt outs because right. mm-hmm. they think they have the opportunity to win the national championship. Yeah. So, I think, you know, you got, you got to look at where you get improved to be capable of winning the football game. Well, being capable uh, comes from having belief. We'll talk about that with Chad Scott in just a moment. Um, my one takeaway, by the way, just to fast or rewind a little bit from the bowl weekend was the amount of people that came up in support of me on this podcast. So I just want to thank you for your prayers wow. and your thoughts. You know what? Um, you know what? Because, big, big because what did you hear? No, what did you hear? I'm, I'm telling you right now. Sides. What did you hear? They are like, I understand why you're an emotional disaster. Because they you don't. No. they don't. Um, <laughs> no, because they literally were like, they are so mean to you. It's funny like, I have some people. I don't think jo- means the right uh, no. word. Joe and I at the same time, and we keep this in house. Tough love. Right. Oh, Joe and I had actually we multiple people. Multiple people came up to us and said, you know what? It's great how you just gave me <laughs> a hard time. So I feel like we're playing. If we're here in both, Whatever. that means we're doing it right. No, if you're, if you're no. Here, um, you're it from both sides, we're doing something. It right. really was cool to see. Like, wow, so many people, people actually listened to this So thing. many people that, that stopped us and, and said how much they, they love the podcast and yeah. love the TV show. It's, and yeah, it's been it, really cool. it was really cool. You know what's really cool for me is that I've been, I've been, and I've been, this, this, I'm getting a little bit emotional about this. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> Is that I've been here since 1997, right? Yeah. And to see, like, like you said, to see, like, there's guys that I coached, yeah, that were at the at the at the ball game, mm-hmm. and got getting to see them. But just to see, I think it's to add on to your point that you made, Matt, and that is like, oh, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. Now, but I think why you see such unity within the LU community is because everything always goes back to a starting point. And that starting point was the vision of Dr. Falwell. Yeah. And so I think the way that the guys from the past generations look at it, the past years look at it, is that we were just a building block towards the vision. Mm-hmm. And the vision is getting closer and closer to being realized. So why would we be bitter towards what they have now when we were all part of the process of getting it yeah. to this point? Wow, that and, should have and, been his pregame speech. And I, and I, think, yeah. and I think that... I think that is what was so cool to see for me because I was here in 1997 when yeah. there was no money, there was no budget really. We were just, you know, trying to piece the thing together and, and survive, yeah. right? And to see where it is. So I think, I think that unity yeah. of the LU community is what I thought was so cool. That's awesome. It was awesome. Um, so you know Dougie Fresh, who like decorated our set. Yeah. Uh, he sent me a text. You know, it took 27 years of employment for Doug to be a Flames football fan. That's what? what Matt said. But he texts me, we got Caden back. What a week. What, what a week. is we going about the game. on? So what now, a roller coaster. All right. roller coaster. All right. So the Fiesta Bowl is just part of the 2023 chapter. Let's, well, I guess it was technically 2023. You just got Caden back. You got. <clears throat> Let's just that look. That started the domino. I mean, and, yeah. all these guys, I'm run it back, run, run it, it back, back, run it back, run it back. Let's go. It Let's actually go. started. Go. I think it started with Cooley, right? Wait, the bowling ball. The bowling ball got it rolling. <laughs> And then That's boom! I like the name Teapot. Yeah, who what? I love yeah. the name Teapot. We had a guy say they what? call him Teapot. They, they call him Teapot. Short he's like a, he's short and stout. He's like Teapot. <laughs> Here's my little yeah. Teapot. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, short like, and stout. Yeah. Teapot's a great. Dip, I, love that name. I don't Neil know Ryan. it. I don't know if I could do that as a player, like make that my celebration. The, it's just a little, yeah. <laughs> Ah. Actually, I think it's got a chance. Ah, that may you think the teapot comes up and he scores yeah. a touchdown and he goes teapot and then somebody comes by with the football and they go, <laughs> and they drink it. Pinky up, yeah, yeah, pinky up. Yeah. With the, ball, yeah. the teapot yeah, goes up, whoop, and then you whoop, drink it. That's yeah. a, you, see, I like truly. You're welcome. Well, going back through some of the uh, games, I didn't even realize one of the games. I think it was UMass. Cool, had the long run. Where then after the run, he did yeah. he did the bowling. He did that, right. and that's tough to beat. I mean, that's that is tough to beat. Um, so. I mean, I know I'm going to leave some people out, but you got basically four of the six O linemen returning. Um, you got Bentley Han- Take a ride. Take a ride, my Bentley Hanshaw. Yeah. Um, Cooley. Quentin Cooley. Brylon Green. Kaso. Brylon Green. Green. Uh, T.J. Um, Bush. There's all T.J. Bush there's was another this big. one outlier out there who's out visiting, right? Well, and we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. But you know what? what? Here's the thing. Here's what I keep because people, you know, always texting us. You yeah. know, what do you hear? What? Are... I'm holding everything loosely. Until that first day of they, fall camp. Yeah, they call them you know loose, what I mean? They call them loose change warrant. You know what I mean? Like, the way college football is right now, 
I he, just don't assume anything. That's a, you know right? what? That's, that's a, probably a best a great way, way to approach it. your football yeah. life, Matt. Yeah. Warren. Just you know yeah. what? We'll see who's there that's on game one. We'll see who shows up and swearing the uniform. I last week I told Matt, I'm like, I have got to find a time to meet with my therapist about not getting place. emotionally you need attached. A happy place. I get way too emotionally attached, and then they Where's rip my heart out. Where's your happy place? You need a happy place. I think it's with. I think it's in, in the Italy. woods on a golf course. Oh, I think it's in Italy with <laughs> yeah. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I think your little Running Italy trip. Jason told me on the trip on the about beach. how much he loved doing that photo shoot that you guys did in Italy. I yeah. and, hate you. <laughs> and how much he loved holding your hand and yeah. running through the sand. Yeah. With, with his, I rolled with up his, his pants and he rolled up his pants. He really kicked you know, his feet up. Uh, it really <laughs> yeah. mel- made him feel like a man. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? You, you are evil. Get, you you are was, evil. He, now he we're just, never going to do a family photo me, shoot ever again. I was again. just so happy <laughs> to do that with her. Yeah. You know what that was? That's every guy's nightmare. Help. <laughs> that is, you are, I'm never having family photos ever again. So hopefully that's uh, the last one we need. Get the chat, Scott. Um, get the chat, all right, Scott. let's get, yes, what please. About basketball? Can, yeah. we no, basketball? We'll talk about that. basketball yeah, and the Flames fantasy update yeah. and the bold prediction yeah. Snell scoring system yeah. and a mailbag. But first, let's that go to this conversation. Can I take a toss <laughs> to the head strength yet. and conditioning coach, Chad Scott? He may or may not be the face of the chocolate brownie <laughs> protein powder mix. Oh, what are you, you guys talking did, about? No, you don't understand. Mm. I did a hot seat segment, yeah. and I was like, if you could eat one thing the rest of your life, oh, what yeah. would you eat? Yeah. And Coach Chad Scott yeah. said chocolate. I don't know if the brownie was part of like one of his recipes. Chocolate protein mix? Protein yeah. mix, because yeah. you can make brownies. Dude, you can stuff. make oh, wow. a smoothie. Yeah. Like That's He just your, started r- rambling yeah. about all these things that you can make. Yeah. from one thing. Yeah. That's just said pizza. New Year's so, yeah. resolution for anybody who wants to lose weight yeah. or gain muscle. Yeah. You, right. Chocolate protein. Right. You put a little bit of water in it and it consistency of like a cake icing. Yeah. Put it in the microwave and it bakes up like a little brownie, like a little cake for about, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Get this. Or Get this. you can just put it in the, in the freezer. It makes ice cream that way. Put a little this bit of peanut like butter on it. like the Julia Childs of I mean, it's coach. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. got so many different things you can do with yeah. it. Yeah. See, for I sure. thought, always thought that chocolate ice cream did the same thing. Yeah. 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 Right. I know. Yeah. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. I've been oh, eating shoot. too much of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so. shoot. That yeah. was time wasted. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Exactly. All these years, I thought chocolate ice cream. Yeah. That's why he still hasn't run the mile. Maybe 2024. Joe Young will finally run the mile. Probably not happening um, this year. I, I just have to put my money on that. The mile. Well, I'll tell you, we'll if you see. want to get crazy, what you can do is you get oh, vanilla. We're getting Here crazy. Go. Yeah. Vanilla protein powder. Yeah. Chocolate protein powder. Mix it. Okay. Do the same. Swirl. Okay. Separate just separate. Do it separate. Separate. Okay. Bake the chocolate up into a microwave. Yeah. Use the vanilla protein powder as an icing. Put it on top. This Put you a little bit of peanut butter, and you got a cake can, with absolutely zero sugar, zero fat. Can we do fat. a cooking segment? We need we to. We may want to do a cooking segment. <laughs> we need to. Oh, my this gosh, show. this yeah. is amazing. We need to. I got all types of I take I mean, all types of tricks. I'm, do- I'm doing yeah. this tonight. I got now, all types of yeah. tricks. Now do you know why like, he yeah. had the introduction? Babe, let me handle dessert tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what do we got here? Yeah. I got all what? types of food <laughs> hacks for you yeah. right there if you want. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Coach, let's look back to the Fiesta Bowl. How much protein powder? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. What was that experience like for you as a head strength coach and, and your family got to uh, oh, come along as it well? It was unbelievable. I mean, I've never been a part of anything uh, that came close to the hospitality. The, you know, we were able to practice and we were able to lift weights at the, at the Angels facility. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just top notch. Fell in love with Arizona. I've never been to Arizona before. Oh, really? Great. And I, I'm immediately, I'm, I got a trip plan in spring break going back. Nice. Stop. Yeah, we're gonna check it out again. I mean, That's it's awesome. it was unbelievable. I mean, and for our whole staff, our whole family, kids played at the pool. They went horseback riding, and then I mean, just the game itself, just being in that environment was uh, second to none. You know what? I was really impressed by coach. The cacti. That's the, you are big on the cacti. She loves the cacti. <laughs> the cacti. First time my oldest actually saw. I'll tell, <laughs> tell you what I was impressed by. I was impressed when we were coming back. I think Matt yeah, Matt was driving us back, and you guys had gone to the dinner mm-hmm. with the other team, with Oregon. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. And I said, oh, so Matt pulling the side, oh, there's Coach Gus. So I hopped out of the car, and he was out there Soup. with his lovely wife, and they were all gussied up. Yeah. 
I mean, coach, yeah. you cleaned up nice. Well, you and your that. wife both yeah. look great. I the appreciate whole, that. The whole crew looked fantastic. Well, my wife does a good job of dressing me and, and yeah. making sure yeah. that I'm presented. And then out. I think he said his last words to me, I got to get out of this tie. Well, yeah, boy, you know what? No. He, he showed me he saw the tag on the suit. You were returning yeah, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. When I got yeah. back, a day yeah. later, I JC it Penny, it's a JC yeah. Penny, right? Yeah. Yeah. I took it back to him. I said, I can't If you want to dry it on, you know, it might look good on Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But yeah, we don't we don't have suits that last very long in the house. I wear them for the event and take yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we go back to that game. You see the final score, but you're looking at it, I think, probably through a different lens mm-hmm. than, than a lot of other people in, in, in your line of work. As you see your athletes in Oregon and you kind of see, okay, how are my guys holding up? Mm-hmm. You know, how are they, you know, in terms of just like endurance, all those things that you're gauging, how would you on your scoreboard, if you will, gauge what you saw and then say, okay, so now here is, here's what it looks like to take that next step forward. Sure. I think the biggest thing is, you know, what we were talking about earlier, our guys never quit. And, you know, and, and something that we've been talking about since day one was just the word embrace and what exactly that means. And it's not necessarily embracing all the good things. It's embracing the adversity that comes with it. And I think up front, we battled for four quarters. I think our, I'll take our offensive line against anybody in the country, yeah. you know, and, and I think when, when they manned up and, they, and they, we, just, we drove it right down on them, and, and I was really impressed with the strength up front with our guys. And then, and then again, the speed gap, there is a few guys here or there that are pretty fast, obviously, and that's, you know, that's what they do and that's who they are. Um, you know, but again, our guys never quit and, you know, we didn't have any guys get hurt and, you know, and, and you just look at the length of a season, you know, from August until January and we were able to maintain guys with the full roster and we were able to keep guys away from the soft tissue stuff that usually starts creeping up at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then I felt we were pretty good at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. When you go into an off season, you, mm-hmm. you see, you watch Oregon. Okay, and then you see the level of athlete that they have, mm-hmm. the speed that they have, the strength that they have. So you as a strength and conditioning coach, you go in the offseason with the guys that you currently have. Everybody's always going to say to you, well, you got to recruit better players. you right. got to keep recruiting better, which you're going you're to be able to do. But when you look at your current roster and you as a strength coach, and I don't know if there's analytics on this or whatever it may be, when you bring a kid in as a freshman mm-hmm. to win year to year, how much do you expect to see from an improvement standpoint from a speed and strength wise? Right. Like if you bring a kid in who runs a linebacker who runs a, a four seven, can you turn him in by the time he's a junior to a four five? Like is the or is the margin too great right. between an organ and a liberty where you say, Coach, I you just gotta give me better people at the beginning to work with in order in order to get where we need to get. Well, I think the big thing is when you look at the sport of football and everything in the sport of football is not straight ahead, right? It's a lot of change of direction, a lot of moving. And then so everybody says, hey, I want that 4-5 receiver. Well, if that 4-5 receiver doesn't understand the plays, he's a 4-8 receiver. Right. He's not a 4-5 guy. So you start on your keys first, understanding the game plan, understanding the plays, understanding his techniques. So we put a lot of emphasis into technique. We put a lot of emphasis into the actual sport of football and what they are required to do on the field. And then from that, we look at movement analysis. We, we basically, you know, we sit there and track everything all season long. So when a guy comes in, we're going to put him through a full analysis of his bodies. We're going to find his deficiencies. We're going to find where he's got an opportunity to get hurt in certain parts of his body. And then we're going to pinpoint those. And then we're going to retest every three months or so and then try to fill in those gaps. Because at the end of the day, we want a healthy athlete. We want one that's going to be on the field. You know, and then from there, then we can measure and track the speed. We can track the, you know, the strength gains and things like that. You know, because not necessarily, you know, a guy's all of a sudden getting a squat rack and he might gain five to ten pounds, you know, in a squat rack. And that's great. That's awesome. You know, but that's not what I'm what we're selling it on right there. We're looking at can we can we build essentially armor on the kid and can we prepare them for the rigors of the game and then for the rigors of the season and then obviously close those kind of those gaps along the way. Yeah, but saying that, you're you're talking about freshman to junior. Mm-hmm. In this day and age with the transfer portal, it's so difficult right. to keep these guys in one spot for an extended amount of time. So how difficult is that for you? And, I mean, I'm on an emotional roller coaster. I can't imagine, you know, you're pouring. I could show you the text yeah. messages. It was, it was she just, stays well, on emotional. No, but yeah. seriously, yeah. like, as a guy who's with the – as, as a coach who's – I mean, obviously, right. these coaches are around day in and day out with these guys. But all summer, you're working with these guys. And to pour into someone 
and and see, wanting to see that finished product in, yeah. in a couple of years and then not being able to because they're transferring. How difficult does that ch- and how much does that change your role? It does. I mean, in some ways, you know, I actually put a tweet out the other night about that when everybody's kind of talking about all the portal stuff. And, you know, one thing as a coach is when you go into being a coach and it might sound cliche, but it is what it is when you be when you're a coach you know, you're not pouring into a kid of what they can do for you as an athlete in the moment. You're pouring into them for what you can do for them later in life and how that can carry them their whole life. Whether you're with them for six months or whether you're with them for six years or anything in between, if we can make a difference as as coaches in their life, then we've done our job. And then along the way, develop them as football players, develop them as men, and hopefully together as a team. You know, and so what we do is I look at practice, you know, for instance, like during the bowl prep, I was watching uh, our offensive line and I was watching certain steps and certain things that they were doing. And we're getting cut ups from the tape. I've got talked to Coach Chadwell about um, certain drills maybe the receivers are doing that are going to work on their breaks. So again, like I was saying, it's not necessarily who can have the fastest 40 or who can you know straight linear speed as, as fast as we can I want to see what steps coach Washington's having the guys come out of their breaks I want to see how they're breaking off the line and I want to see if there's ways that we can qu- we can make that quicker and then essentially open up the gap a little bit when we're playing a game on Saturday so those are the little things and you know and again if 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 we got a kid and, and we pour into them the right way and we do everything that we can do and it's just one of those things where it, it ends up where we got him for six months, then hopefully that six months that, that we have a hold of him, you know, he's going to remember that the rest of his life. See, that was your problem as a coach, Joe. Yeah. You were all worried about the moment and not pouring in for the, what? the life Why aspect. are you throwing Joe into the room? What did Joe ever do? <laughs> Joe's just getting ready to ask just, another question. Yeah, you, she just yeah, cuts yeah, him off at the a, knees. That's yeah. a, that's a, yeah. Yeah. So I always pour it in. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're not going to have fun this year. Yeah. 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 Let's watch wow. the Flames okay. Central yeah. podcast. Okay. With, 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 that, with that being said, a, a question for you on the – specifics of how you train the kids because i know when i played it was like you had offensive linemen defensive linemen or a group Mm -hmm. and then you had uh uh, running backs defensive backs receivers and you had linebackers you know etc so you had three different groups right do you nowadays in 2023 and i hear you talking to you i guess we are in four now (laughs) yeah 2000 2020 happy new year everybody uh 2024 how specific do you get with the individual positions when you're training these kids in the offseason? Is the is a receiver doing totally different work than what a defensive back is doing and linebacker, so on and so forth? With your staff, how individually specific do you get with the different position groups? Yeah, so I think there's certain times of the year where you can do that. So like when we get back, we're getting back next week and essentially we're getting back and it's going to be pretty standard in regards to what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get stronger. We got about a three week block to where we can just kind of get the wheels rolling again and get back into it. But as we progress closer and closer to the season, that it branches out some. When it comes to running, when it comes to our speed work, our skill guys, whether it's receiver, running back, or um, uh, DB, they're going to do their going to work on getting fast our big guys we're going to have them in about a five to ten yard radius where we'll work the top end oh, okay. speed with the yeah. other guys you know and so we have we have essentially we have two speed days a week so you are we'll very very specific. very much so yeah. so our we'll have our we'll have our acceleration days and then we'll have our top end days on our top end days that's when our o-line d-line guys they'll work in that in that area now when you also look at we'll have we'll have straight ahead days and then we'll have change direction days we're working a lateral focus and that's where our linebackers our defensive players will do a lot of lateral stuff with them yeah and then so it just kind of works you know month to month week to week depending upon what we got going on okay so i know you know people think i think a lot of fans think well game's over good guys to get a break you know, off season, ah, whatever. Yeah. I asked you at or at the bowl game, I'm like, are you gonna get any time? You're like, ah, I might maybe an afternoon when I get back. <laughs> like, yeah. like what what does it look like now for you? You're talking about the guys getting back here. What does yeah. the next three, six weeks look like for you? Because it sounds like there's no off season here. It's no. it's showtime for you again. It is, yeah. it is. And that's that's I get excited about this. I mean, we we got a couple days where staff was able to kind of get away and then uh we'll, my staff will get back together tomorrow and uh we'll get together and kind of start planning out the next three weeks. And then really we have three weeks of lifting, three weeks of running, and we're gonna start spring ball early. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's the plan to kind of get them. We can have a longer development time on the back end. And so we'll get in while football's fresh, we'll do that, we'll knock that out, and then we'll have a longer 
longer kind of summer block to be able to train the guys uninterrupted with the, without spring breaks and all the different things that come with school, you know. And so we uh, we'll get back, we'll we'll lift and uh, run. We start Monday and get rolling on it. It must be a lot easier too going into year two, you know, because yes. last year, I mean, you were living with. The, the frat house. Oh, I love it. I'll tell you what. I, I love my, I love my I family. Mean, the animal house. Yeah. Durkin, the animal yeah, house. The animal the house. Animal Durkin house. said he's the only one who do the dishes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm not Durkin did. did, did yeah. your back, Durkin. Yeah. I'll tell you, Dittin was Newland. You know, yeah. Newland, Newland, ain't doing Newland just dishes. ordered out yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza yeah. boxes yeah. laying he all the time. But how much does it help, you know, being a little bit more, you know, adjusted to the transition and all of that and getting an earlier start? Oh, it's amazing it's it's so much better because i mean last year when you're getting here you're trying to implement the culture you're trying to implement mm -hmm. expectations you know you're trying to learn all the guys names you're trying to learn personalities you're trying to figure everything out on top of that you're trying to figure out the the logistics of life yeah. of moving your family and and figuring all that out you know and so I tell you what, our time at the Animal House was <laughs> was something that I would never trade because it was awesome. And actually, uh, Dirk and I were talking about this over the bowl game trip was, you know, it was the first time in a long time. You know, we all have families. We all have things outside of work. Yeah. But it was the first time that we all were together right. yeah. and immersed in not only just football, but immersed in our own each other's lives yeah. on trying to just lift each other up. And and it was, it was so a special cool. time. It was awesome. That's awesome. Last yeah. thing for me. You're rolling right back into oh, now starting to prepare for next season. Yeah. Have you had a chance? Have you had time to just kind of sit back for a minute and just think about what you all were able to accomplish? Like, has that yeah. set in yet, or are you just spinning forward so fast that that you'll you'll get to that at, at some later point? You know, I'm I made uh I made a sp I made a like purpose to do that at the bowl game mm. and and really kind of take a step back and practice take a step back pregame, take a step back postgame, and then just really absorb it all, you know. And, and Coach Chadwell made a comment during the season. He challenged the guys once the season kind of started rolling and we were winning a bunch of ball games. I think it was like game five, game six, somewhere around there. He challenged the guys to, to not – get too like focused on the next week and 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 actually focus on the moment and and he, he made a he made a statement about um don't let the, don't look back and miss the good old days when the good old days are you know right here yeah, and sometimes yeah. we we miss the idea that we're actually living in the good old days yeah. and uh and because we're so as coaches we're so focused on the next week the next plan the next pro you know progress whatever it is you know and so that's what i did at the bowl game i took a step back i hung out with the staff you know, I hung out with Coach Chadwell and, and all the different things that we did. And, and you just take a step back, and it's it's actually amazing to think from what transpired from January to January within this group of men. And, and And the roller coaster of the <laughs> yeah. year and the way everything was and, and how they really grew together. I mean, it's it's – you know, we, our word that I talked to the guys all summer about was leaving a legacy. And I don't think our, our guys understand the legacy that they left. Mm -hmm. um, and I think down the road when they get older, they'll probably understand it. Amen. But yeah. it is an amazing, amazing testament to, to them and what they were able to achieve. A lot of awesome post-game celebrations this year. What was your favorite? Oh, man, I tell you what, there were so many of them. The I'll be honest with you, the Mariachi I band know, that was mine. had to be, <laughs> yeah. you know, had to be probably one of the greatest things. Yeah. And I think what was cool about that was when we were, I uh, was going back in about the fourth quarter to kind of put some stuff up real quick. And and Brad kind of stopped me. He said, hey, listen, Mariachi Band's warming up <laughs> in, the, in the coach's and locker as you, room. As you tell you know, them, you hear that call track. And, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 hold hey, on. Mariachi Band's yeah. warming up. He yeah. said they're warming up. He said, so if you go in there, don't be alarmed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I mean, that is beautiful. but I mean, we got, you know, the when we played, uh, when we had one game where uh, we, you know, we had, it was uh, the Western week where it was Tombstone week. And, and uh, we had the Undertaker actually. Actually turned around in the championship week. The Undertaker sent us a message, uh, just wishing us oh, good luck. Nice. Cool. So we had a team meeting. You know, we hit team meeting. We had a, the Undertaker talking to the guys yeah, about finishing great. the deal. I yeah. mean, so it is. Uh, you know, and I told Coach, I told Coach Corn because Coach Corn, since the history of doing these celebrations, Coach corn has been number one. But I think Teddy Gallagher uh, took, the title took the title with the mariachi band. Oh, yeah. and so Coach Corn is going to have to step his game up yeah. next year. Oh yeah, yeah. How so, how much of your of you self personally with the with the guys and then you're as a strength staff, are you a like very goal driven person where you set goals for the guys 
and set goals as a staff and then try to you know write those down to Chio's goals? Or is it like, hey, let's just get out and get the best that we can out of you? No, I think you set goals. I think you do. I think you set goals, and I think you set directions on how to get those goals. And then when you set down expectations with the guys, you know, I don't necessarily set expectations of I need you to lift X amount of weight or I need you to run X amount of speed. What I set for, for them is here's what I need you to be. This is who I need you to become over the next three months. I need you to become a leader. I need you to become, you know, a, a guy that does not necessarily leads a team, but maybe leads a couple guys, you know. And then as the season goes on or as the offseason goes on, you the relationship you have with them, I can pull them aside and say, listen, this is where we need to get better. This is, you know, or we find out, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to play in the NFL? Do you want to be a starter? Do you try to gain a scholarship? And then so we have those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And then from that, that's kind of how we set goals and what we're doing, you know? And so that's, so they're very individual based in a lot of ways. And then as a team, I sit with my staff and I sit obviously with Coach Chadwell and we try to figure out, okay, here's where we are. Who's, here's who we think we are. This is where we need to get, and now we got to fill in the gaps in between. It'll be interesting to see who fills that leadership role that X Xavier Godwin yeah. had. You know, X was such a big vocal leader for this team, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see. Yeah, and, uh, and that's and that's the beauty that of the off season. Yeah, you know, it's going to take a handful of guys stepping forward, and mm -hmm. you know, the guys are there. It's just. You know, we got to yeah. we got to teach guys how to do that too. Yeah. What are some of your goals for the 2024 year? I'll be honest with you, sleep. I mean, that's <laughs> one of them. Um, no, I tell you, I think I think the biggest thing for me, and maybe cliche, I guess, is is just to continue to figure out how to connect more with this group and and understand that as good as last season was, there's more to come, mm -hmm. and then we're not done yet. And and everybody, you know, you. Hey, they, Liberty's arrived. We're in the Fiesta Bowl, you know, and we just get started. And that's the biggest thing. And I think that's the most exciting thing is because the, the, the future is bright and, and there are much, much better days ahead than what we've already done. And that's the exciting part about it. Coach Chadwell said in his postgame pre press conference, like, it's an indicator of what, how far we got to go. And we have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. When you look at the strength conditioning program compared to like an Oregon or a Florida State, like the, I looked at the what, what would have been the 12 team playoff mm -hmm. and they had Liberty playing Florida State in the first round. When you look at that as strength conditioning, if you had to put on a scale of one to 10, how far away you are right now, what would, what, I'm going to pin you down. Yeah. What would the number be to where on that scale of one to 10 of how far away? One being the closest? One, one, one being like we're right there with okay. them. Yeah. Okay. Like 10 being like, man, we got a long ways to go. I, you know what? I think uh, I know you put me on the spot there, and I think the gap's closer than what Coach Chadwell thinks it is. And and I think the mm -hmm. the biggest thing is it's belief with the guys, you know. And and I think you know you get to a Fiesta Bowl setting, and you're just kind of enamored with all the yep. things that go with the yep. Fiesta Bowl, and you're Happy looking around, there. and right. it's kind of like, and then you're up six three at the first quarter. And you're like, wait a minute, we can play with these guys, yeah. you know. And then, and then it kind of goes off the rails a little bit. But when you sit there and and you really look back on everything, and and you truly believe you belong somewhere, and you truly believe that belief can close a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so I think we're I think we're closer. closer than you think? I think we're closer than what a I lot like of people think we are. Fans like to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Go home and make your chocolate protein. And throw Brownie. a little vanilla icing on top. Throw a little yeah, vanilla amazing. icing yeah. on I got, top. I need to make a cookbook. Of yeah. All yeah. The, things. the Coach yeah. Chad Scott cookbook. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. I know yeah. you I know you came back a day early to come Coach, on the Flame Central podcast. The Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, I've listened to this heat for I don't want to hear it. Almost oh, yeah. a full year he's been Same. saying he would run a mile. and has you, Do you know how this started? He no. said he could okay. run a six-minute no, mile. I didn't say six. And I, I will, I will bring. It. He eight went eight a full minute. defensive. Eight and eight then he didn't know how many laps were a mile. mile. Oh, he can do an eight-minute mile. Yeah, I mean, I'm no spring chicken, but I'm going to tell you what. I think I can get an eight-minute mile. He's been eating chocolate ice cream. How long do we have to train? Coach, coach, coach. We train as long as we need. Okay. Okay. It's on our clock. Okay. I mean, this was supposed to that happened last May. Yeah. So yeah, whenever you so guys want to get together. We need to set it up and, and you can video it. Yeah, oh, no, this, was it. We, yeah. we had one he, of the. He coach times it. He's going to time it. Oh, my He's gosh. Time. My motivator. I, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. So I can we'll tell you, Coach. In the uh, toe shoes. And, and <laughs> <laughs> unlike, what you, unlike what you said, the, <laughs> the gap is much further. <laughs> yeah. for Joe. One to ten. It's a much further yeah. gap. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. right I'm going to ask Coach Jamal that question. Yeah, not a lot of belief. Not a lot of belief from the side of the table. No, no. Coach, yeah. excited to see what you do with these guys in yeah. the offseason. Thank Thanks so much again you. for your time. I appreciate Thanks, it. Coach. Thank you all.
All right, Chad Scott, this may or may not be breaking news, but he told us, oh, well, I guess I just gave the source away. <laughs> yeah. The Joker mask may be making some appearances Around. at Liberty Arena. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe some other hoops. sporting events. Maybe some other sporting maybe. events. Maybe. He's a big basketball guy. Oh, so, basketball Flames guy. Nation, be on the lookout. you got to get just one comment, um, one other comment on the Chad Scott interview. How do you go up from here? Because when we did the sit, I did the sit down with Coach Chadwell before the Fiesta yeah. Bowl. He's like, I think I, I told my wife, I think we won too much, you know? So when you're this football program in terms of the staff, yeah. how do you go into the next season, like not looking at all, all that you accomplished last year? Well, well go, okay. ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think the way it ended hopefully serves as a motivator and a, a measuring stick right away. Mm -hmm. um, so you have something fresh right away that you can point to. Say, okay, we were 13-0. And not taking anything away from that, it was incredible. But you say, okay, but you want to take that next step. Let's let's move on from the 13 and look at that 14th game. So now you have something where, all right, here's where we grow to, right? I think the other thing that we're going to have to really embrace, and that's the word they use a lot, is as big as the – target was on your back last season mm -hmm. it just doubled like it just doubled yeah. yeah you know what i mean so like that that's something too where i think you better the what do they say that you know the work that you put in to get last year's results it's not the work that you put in to get next year's results mm -hmm. like it's gonna because people are gunning for you even more so than they were a year ago yeah in your first year in conference usa you know what i mean yeah i think with that being said though I think what Liberty puts when you're on that when you're at that stage, you're going to recruit better. Right. You're going to get to more people who are coming out of the transfer portal, and be likely you have quite a product to offer when you can throw the film on that you played in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, so I think the attitude, the attitude of Liberty football, has got to be that we need to completely. I agree with you. you show everybody the utmost respect. Like yeah. like anybody can beat you at any time. Right. But you have to go in with the attitude that we are going to completely dominate Conference mm -hmm. USA. Right. You have to go with that attitude. And our ultimate goal is to massively close the gap in order to be in the playoffs. Yeah. Because let's let's be real here. Let's be real here. Liberty is going to be the clear-cut favorite going in as a Conference USA champion. Do you champion. think? No, no doubt okay, whatsoever. So this, no is what doubt. I, this is what I but, but, chatter on Twitter, though, that, pe that people are going to think the playoff committee is like, look what, look no, no, what happened no, against no, He's yeah. talking about in conference. Yeah, no, I'm talking about, oh, I'm talking about in sorry. Conference I'm USA. In I'm Conference sorry. USA, USA, they're going to be the clear yeah. favorite. Oh, absolutely. Not, not even yes. close, okay? Now, what you have to overcome – Right, is you're going to probably be one of three teams that are right there, depending on else what's going on. Yeah. And okay, we put them last year in the game; they got beat really, really bad. But man, this product is much more improved than what it was before. Right. So it gives you another opportunity to close that gap. And I think so much of that is in how you do in the transfer portal, how you recruit, and then the reality of it. Once again, is the NIL. I mean, can you raise the funds within the uh, NIL collective? to be able to keep the guys that you have here and to be able to, to take it to the next level. Because at that level, when you're talking against Oregon, Florida State, Alabama, you start bringing these in, those guys have an NIL collective available to them that is going to give them advantage. So Liberty has to realize that if you want to do that, then you got to compete at that level with, with that, Maybe or you make the decision yeah. that you're going to get left out and go play in the Pop-Tart Bowl. I mean, that, I'm not, that's, that's your choice. I'm not totally against the Pop Tart. Bowl. I thought, I mean, I did. It was enjoy a heck of an entertaining tart. game. Yeah, I want to eat really that. I, I did want to try. I don't want to go good? Pop Tart Ball. I want to go. I want to go. go, 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 go You're right. You're right. I, I want understand. a chance to play, be that the 12 Absolutely. versus five seed, Absolutely. and close that gap. Yeah, but I just feel like what needs, in, in y'all's opinion, what needs to change with this transfer portal? It is just out of control. Well, because that's we do a whole show on on that. You do a massive show on that. And the fact that they, the fact that they just open it up to multiple transfers. Yeah. I mean, Caden yeah, is all, honestly not even in the conversation if he had to graduate first in May right. and then have to go and win the job at a full, uh, only get one fall camp. The second you open it up to multiple transfers and people can leave at any times, it's like it's Wild West. I mean, it's the Wild West. Stuff. I I will say, though, it's cool to see on Twitter, like Flames Nation. We trust Chadwell and his staff. You know, look what they did last year with a 50% roster turnover. So no matter what happens, 
I'm, I, I am, Here's my emotional line. roller coaster is yeah. stable right Bottom now. line is, it's, okay, good. No matter who we lose, you, you know, because it, you're, if yeah. I was, but I will say, like, if I was, if my role was Chad Scott's and I'm sitting here pouring into a player and then they're just piecing out, like, left and right, I would be, that, that would be tough for me. No, that, would that, be, doesn't, that doesn't matter to Chad Scott. It matters, obviously, to the kid lead. He loves the kids, right? But Chad Scott's going to be Chad. Chad Scott's a great strength and conditioning coach. Well, where's the and development he's a great, anymore? And he's there's a no great, development. He's a great coach. There's development. You're, I mean, you're, you're, you've got a group They're of bouncing guys. bouncing around every but, year. But there's not. How many guys are really bouncing? I don't think that's going to happen here. I think what Chad Scott and Jamie do, and this is the reason why so many kids made the decision, Caden, along with all the other players, like have made the decision to come back because they feel – what can be done here, the unity of the team, the family of the atmosphere, yeah. where it, it makes them pause before they say, oh, I'm just going to peace out and go into the transfer portal. Yeah. I, I, like think, I think the, the, program, the program of that Coach Chadwell and the staff have built and the connection they've made their players makes them much more likely to want to continue to be right. a part of it. You're right. And, and so I, don't, I think that's one of the reasons and why you don't see the, you can the do massive transfer portal. Anything that you can do at another school – you can do here because we've seen it now. Twelve team, yeah. Correct. We've seen guys go in the NFL draft. We've seen you can play Demario in the New York Six game. Demario Douglas for the New England Patriots. We've seen that's probably not a great step. I mean, they only England. scored twenty-seven right. points right. last season, right? right. But, 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 but he still led the New England. You Patriots. can do all yes. of that from here. Right. And the bottom line is, I heard a wise man once give a pregame <laughs> speech where he kept referring to checkpoints, <laughs> and Very this wise. this game was. A checkpoint, not just in terms yeah. of the season, but in terms of the growth and the progression of the program. You reached a milestone. You reached a level that had never before been reached. But that's not the end game. It's a, it's a checkpoint. You went there. You didn't no. you didn't play as well as you hoped. That's a checkpoint. Now you got to go back and and move it up, take it up another level. What and does that's it take what to close to and continue right. to close the gap? Yeah, I, I'm with you, Matt. I'm I'm not getting attached until first day of fall camp. That's fine. So I'm with you. But um, we do believe in this staff. I know Absolutely. this has uh, been a lengthy podcast, but there's been a lot to cover. Yeah. We're still going to give you our one word for 2024. Oh, we are. Oh, we are. Yeah. I didn't well, know about just, that. Just yeah, yeah, I you know. Got to think oh. of a good one. Okay. Um, yeah. Think of your one word that you want to work on for this one. year, oh, okay. and then, yeah. and then. Um, but let's talk men's hoops quickly. Yeah. First CUSA game on the road, yeah. lost um, oh, at Western oh, Kentucky. That one hurt. Yeah, it hurt. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the final play over this right now. So okay. if you're watching, you can you can see. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll let you so, just. All right. Here's the thing. Uh, big picture. What is your the decision though the of the final? Uh, the play? final play. Yeah. Uh, Zach Cleveland had a clear path to the bucket. I thought he could have laid it in to tie it. We're down two at that point. Kick to a corner three for Brody Peeble, who made that shot like yeah. a minute earlier. If he would have made that shot, we wouldn't be talking about right. This, if, if that right? shot goes in, we're all Best saying great. Ever. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, had a pretty good look. Zach Cleveland so headsy. Yeah. Been right. All that kind of stuff. You get a rebound. Kind of wish we would try to take it right back up there instead. Kind of a running away from the hoop fadeaway three that didn't go. We lose. The thing with this team, we talked about it at the beginning of the year. They're not big, right? Six seven is about the biggest guy they run out there. They're not what you would call overly athletic. They have some guys that are, but not not across the board. So you really have to rely on your shooting. That's yeah. what they do well, yeah, typically. Play defense and shoot. But so the margin of error is is kind yeah. of thin, right, with this yeah. team. And so you go eight of thirty five from three point range. You're, oh, that you're twenty twenty three percent. You're not going to win against threes. good teams 35. doing 35. that now. Most nights, you don't feel like you will shoot shoot that that level. But it does certainly make the margin for error a little slimmer because when you have a tough shooting night like that, you don't have a lot of other things you can do. Really, Zach Cleveland's the only guy that I feel like can can finish at the rim consistently for this team. Yeah. And so that if it's if the shots aren't falling, like teams are gonna they're gonna take that away. Like you gotta you gotta beat them from beyond the arc. When you get 35 threes, you gotta be able to shoot better than that. They had clean looks. I think that's the big thing. If you're if you're Richie McKay, no doubt frustrated. You walk away from this game saying, "What? Well, what was the quality of shots we were?" Correct. Getting? I think that's a big part. And if of you're that's getting the looks that you want, yeah. you live with it and say yeah. that most nights it's not going to go that way. Right. So that's probably the biggest takeaway for them after, after this game. Yeah. Coach McKay loves their character, ability to respond to adversity. It was certainly a dose of reality of how good this conference is. I feel like we got better tonight, even though we didn't win. I think it's an indication that our group is tough-minded on the comeback effort. We got some good looks. So those were his thoughts yeah, after the game. But it's true. This is a league that's bigger, more athletic than what you came out of. So right. you're going to 
again, you, you, you know you're going in at a deficit here, in terms of thing. size every here, night. Here's the thing is – Coach McKay clearly knows what his recipe to win is, right? There's not there's not a lot of question yeah. marks out there, what you said. So, once again, if you're 8 of 35, but those yeah. 35 threes you take, if you start breaking down the analytics of it, yeah. and you look at them and you go, hey, you know, 32 of those were quality looks. Yep, we, took three, we took three bad threes, yeah. right? Trust me, you got enough guys that can shoot where you're going to make a lot more than eight yeah. and have a chance to win the game. It was impressive to see them. With being down so being down late, yeah, the way that they fought back and had the opportunity to tie. Here, here's one thing to keep it. an eye on going forward. You got to get more consistent bench production. Yeah, and that's been an issue for them against Shiloh the better teams. The Shiloh played well in the yeah. first half. Brody hit the one shot, so he had the three points that he yeah. got late. But outside of that, you really didn't get anything. So you're leaning heavily on your starting five and asking them to do a lot of heavy lifting. You have, you have to find one of those guys. It's most likely Brody, Shiloh. I'd like to see more of Ben Sutherland, see if he can continue to get better. But you need some of those guys to give you a little bit more off the bench, I think, moving forward. Uh, theirs hasn't been a whole lot of bench production. Yeah, I mean, well, Brody had 25 the game prior. Yeah, and that's, you non just that's a non-D1. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, like, it's hard, so. too, when you're – and that's the thing when you go through the numbers. They've either played somebody, a team really, really good, like right. an FAU and, and Alabama, Alabama yeah. or you're playing Mid-Atlantic yeah. Christian. But huge game Wednesday, Jacksonville State. Yep. They're better than they were a year ago. They come to town. They just beat FIU. Have to find a way to win that game. You Flames go, Nation, we need you there. You drop to 0-2 with your next game on the road at La Tech, who may be one of the top two or three teams in the conference. I think it's pretty fair to say. Who's, like, you put yourself in a tough a spot. Tough, so tough basketball conference. Yeah, you, you got you to win Wednesday. No, there's yeah. no nights off in the CUSA for sure. Jack State's 9-7 and seven on the year, 1-0 yeah. in Conference yeah. USA. Um, 7 p.m. is tip-off, so Flames Nation, get out to Liberty Arena. Yeah. Need your support. The women also lost the first CUSA matchup of the year, 68-66. Heartbreaker. Turnovers. Um, it was 24 yeah. turnovers. Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah. It was yeah. tough. Western Kentucky had our number on Saturday. Yeah. It was yeah. it was rough. Um, so they'll look to get back in the win column as well, I believe. I think they may be at Jackson. It's in just flip flop. Yeah. So it, it just flip flops. Um, let's wrap things up with bold predictions. The Snell. Oh, oh can we go? Okay, let's do that. System. Let's do the Snell scoring system. We have quick mailbag as well. Uh, bottom line, I won the, the contest because I picked uh. I picked Oregon. The rest of you did not. So I end up we winning. We were like 50 you points You the whole thing? I win the whole thing. Look at Joe. Look at Joe's face. I thought Emily was up a point. Oh, she had a point and a half on me. I ended up so with six tied. points. You she, tied her. You six tied points her. overall. She ended up with four and a half. Joe, what? three and a half. Wait, did you yeah. give yourself a bonus point? Joe. No. Hey, I won the uh, 2024. Did you? Joe, y'all can only. Well, maybe yeah. you could remain you know the same. What? I'm, so, I'm all about looking to the future. That's right. I can't wait for Don't the look in the past. I am going to win. There's a reason the, the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. Thank you. Right? You know? Joe's oh goals. Yeah. Joe's goals for 2024. All right. Win the Flames Fantasy League. Yeah. Run an eight minute mile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. 2024 goals. And the snow. And, flame. and. Take Jeff Snell out to dinner so I can clearly win the Snell okay. scoring system. It's a hat trick, baby. He said it's a hat trick. Jeff Snell said he's actually sending me something in the mail. So I'm curious to see what it is. <laughs> if it's Where does wrapped, Snell live I'm, again? Is it Montana or uh, Idaho? Idaho. 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 Uh, might be a potato. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe a take golden him potato. Out, take him out for some good potatoes. Yeah. Double double car. All right, guys. quickly, Flames wait, Fantasy wait, League. What's oh, your oh, one oh, word for 2024 oh. since you're giving us your goals? Yeah. You're giving the goals. Oh, yeah, goals. I'm going to go with the word embrace. Oh. We're gonna embrace. Yeah, where'd gonna you come embrace. up? Yeah. Where'd you come up with that one? <laughs> What's wrong with that word? That was the Flames football team's word for the entire year. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, I'm gonna change my. Oh word. my god. Is that it? Embrace was a word yeah. for the year. Yeah, I think Chad, yes. Scott, Chad Scott mentioned that. Oh, yeah, yeah. and, and Chadwell used That's it. So 2023. Yeah, right. Please All right. move on. All right, go, Matt. Tell me. Your okay, word. what's your word? <sighs> you want well, me to go first, guys? Yeah, go first. Okay. Go. All right, mine is present. I want to be more oh, present in good. prayer. I want to be more yeah. present on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I want to yeah. be, Boy, I to be more present in my relationships, my, my marriage. Yeah. Um, being present to me yeah. is not using this as much okay. and oh, really setting really more deep. limits. This is got, got deep. Being present. She's thought about you know? this. So, so, you, you, the couch. so you can tell she Have came, you guys not sit down, sat you, down with your spouses you tell, and talked about your word? You can and, tell that she came up with the idea to do the one word thing because <laughs> she's prepared. Neither of us knew this was happening until oh, two minutes welcome ago. welcome to my life. So when you guys come up with On that, that note, other, my other, one word is patience <laughs> because I have to work with people that just drag me down at times. 
Patience. Do I have enough patience? You, you, sound very you patient need a right word there. that starts with P. You know I'm because trying to be patient around here. <laughs> I got to get a new laugh in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the word... Uh, and I think this is where the flames... Persistence. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Stop it! I swear. The three P's. You said P, persistence. That's why we do. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna oh go with the gosh, word, I'm going to go with the so word persistence. We are so connected. We have works. so much chemistry. I'm starting to get all emotional. Yeah. Okay. Woo. All right. Flames Fantasy League, Emily won, <laughs> runaway. 608 yeah. points. 608 I had 449. Points, Joe had 331. <laughs> we don't need to go I, I basically doubled yeah. your score, Joe Yak. Yeah. 608. Wow. It feels good. Congratulations. I want to thank my husband for doing that photo shoot in Positano, Italy, running down the beach with me. Thank you, babe. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you and your support uh, and your guidance. Uh, also, I want to thank Quinn Cooley, <laughs> CJ Daniels, <laughs> Brylin Cooley. Man, you picked all the right people. Austin Anderson. You couldn't have picked a better squad. Yeah, and yeah, then, oh my gosh, who was my fifth guy? That's it. Don't oh, worry about okay. it. Okay. What, um, what did the mailbag say? Mailbag. Mark Murdoch uh, <laughs> sent us an email. <laughs> Wanted to know... Um, who, Murdoch? Did from we see how did he how did the uh Mad basically Mad I'm trying to kind Mad of Mad Murdoch from the he, 18? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um you still know the 18. B. A. Baracus. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh the hit on Caden Salt in the first quarter. <laughs> Should that have been reviewed for targeting? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think it was a clear crown of the helmet yes. to the helmet. The fact that they like they didn't I'm, even not look saying, at it. I'm not saying that they didn't that that he would have gotten tossed. Yeah. Pro- I thought he probably would have. But the fact they never even looked at it, that was yeah, surprising. That was surprising. when they showed it back on the big hit. screen, I'm like, yeah. come on, you got to at least yeah. take a look at that. That's a quarterback too. Yeah, not that everybody's on for, but it's a quarterback. Yeah, no, so that's there you go. All right, that's that's the flame sent the first. One of the new year, 2024. Yeah. Our, this is going to be our biggest year ever. I think biggest, it's going to be our biggest year ever. We have goals. Days. Tell your friend about the Flame Central Flame podcast. Flame Central by. at liberty.edu. Oh, 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 oh. Mailbag. Send us your questions. I'm mailing out mugs. Still have some left. You can get yourself a beautiful one of these mugs right here. Powered by Alcoa Mortgage. So... Flame Central at Liberty.edu. Hey. And if you're looking to buy a home in the new year, there is uh, still Thank a new deal you. going on throughout 2024. 2024 is going to be a great year. great year. With interest rates beginning to drop, which is great news. I need to talk to you right? about that. Yeah. Interest rates <laughs> beginning to drop, yeah. right? For you folks, Liberty folks, I, it's a double whammy. I'm a Liberty. You get a, you get a, you get an interest rate drop, yeah. so you lower your interest rate on a refinance, yeah. right? And you get the Alcova Mortgage Deal specifically to Liberty University employees and alumni where you get a 1% credit, 1% yeah. of your loan amount, $400,000 loan amount, you get a $4,000 credit. Real up cash. to real cash. It's almost as good as money. It's um, it is as good. It as is as good. It is. is. It's not, not Cole's cash. Money. It's yeah. not monopoly it's money. Right. It is right. up to $5,000. So you can reduce your closing costs drastically. You can use that money to pay down your interest rate, whatever you want to do. Well, yeah. that's my job. Joe Yock will figure out what yeah. is the best way to save the Liberty community so help. the most amount of money. All you do is help others. Too easy. Thanks so much again for listening and watching. For Matt and Joe, I'm Emily. We'll see you right here next week.